Well, good morning, all of you, and welcome this second Sunday of Christmas, January 3rd. Happy New Year! And we continue boldly celebrating Christmas, even after many people have put their tree on the curb or out behind the house and uh, taken down everything. That's okay if you have done that, but we still uh, celebrate Christmas in our hearts and we continue on in the church here for the next few days anyway until Epiphany, which is January 6th, the coming of the wise men, the day that we remember uh, how the star led the wise men to the side of Jesus for worshiping him. And today we hear the beginning of John 1, in the beginning, how the Word became flesh. Uh, just a couple of announcements for this week and, and also January. We are going to be having uh, a, our women's Bible study this week, I believe, and uh, we'll have to figure out if there's uh, anybody who wants to gather in person or if maybe we'll still keep that with Zoom or a, a, a phone call this time. But uh, there is Bible study on Thursday, and there's also going to be an evening meeting for some of us who've been talking about uh, how we can uh, appreciate God's gifts more as a congregation and uh, help us all uh, remember uh, what our offerings do and, and how giving is important for ministry, it's called, it's a group called Cultivating Generous Congregations. And so heads up to those of you who uh, know that's coming up on Thursday and anyone is welcome uh, to join that too, just ask me about it. Um, then the following week will be council, not this week, and uh, also our parish board, because this is the month where we have annual meeting. And so we're getting ready for the annual reports, if you are someone who usually has to send in an annual report, uh, we'd like them by the 10th and of January, and we'll compile all that. On the 24th is our annual meeting, and we're going to do that right after the service in the sanctuary, so we have a microphone, and, um, so, and then so that we can also make it available by Zoom, and I hope you will join in at least to see the pictures and I'm hoping to send you pictures this year that you can share with others and kind of spread the, the wealth. There's also pictures in the sanctuary here, a, a number of them from the past year. So if you stop by, take a look. It's hanging on the west wall of the sanctuary. And one other thing with the the, in addition to our regular activities for the annual meeting, we're also going to update our Constitution. There will be copies in the entry for you to take a look at if you're curious what a church constitution is. Uh, we haven't done it for quite a while, and so it's, uh, sometimes it's just a formality, but sometimes it can be really interesting to see what church involves and what is included in that. So. Uh, take a peek, and I will also be sending it to you by email. You can watch for that. I think that's all the announcements, other than thanks again to those who gave poinsettias. Um, and the, the names of those people are in our newsletter that went out by email and paper this week. So take a look at that. And if you bought a poinsettia, you are welcome to take them now this afternoon. If you don't want yours, let me know and we will try and find a home for it. If you're up for helping share poinsettias and deliver them to somebody else, uh, let me know too. So you, uh, that was a, a lovely gift for this past season now. With that, welcome again all of you, and uh, we will be sharing communion later together and so we are beginning our service now with the lighting of the now Christmas candle and uh, this opening litany. Please join me as you are able, whether you're at home or here at Bodenu. In Christ Jesus, you come among us, light shining in the 
darkness. We often fail to welcome this light. Forgive us and renew our hope. Let us live in the light of your grace. Move our hearts to welcome the truth of Christ the Lord. As we light this crystal candle, Christmas candle, let the eyes of our hearts see your salvation. The light shining for all peoples and for us too. Our opening hymn is O Come All Ye Faithful and join us uh, in verses 1, 2, and 4. Not through our own work, 
but through Jesus Christ, come into the world for all people. As we remember the journey from the manger to the cross, we rejoice in this amazing gift. Then mark the sign of the cross on your foreheads. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is offered by Patty Page. Our first reading today is from Jeremiah 31, verses 7 to 14. It refers to God's promises to bring Israel back to its land from the most remote parts of exile. In Zion, Israel will rejoice over God's gifts of food and livestock. Young women will express their joy in dancing. God will give gladness instead of sorrow. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together, a great company. They shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in the straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, He who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry, I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Please join me in the words of Psalm 147 today. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, who has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. God has established peace on your borders and satisfies you with finest wheat. God sends out a command to the earth, a word that runs very swiftly. God gives snow like wool, scattering frost like ashes. God scatters hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against God's coal? The Lord sends forth the word and melts them. The wind blows and the waters flow. God declares the word to Jacob, statutes and judgment to Israel. The Lord has not done so to any other nation. They do not know God's judgments. And all say, Hallelujah. Our second reading is from Ephesians, the first chapter, and I would like you to be thinking about this. Uh, 
with the words of the Apostles' Creed in mind, and I'll come back to that later. So listen for Apostles' Creed things as you listen to the second lesson. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Amen. I invite you to rise for the reading of the gospel. is found in the first chapter of the gospel according to John, the ninth verse. And we say, Glory to you, O Lord. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own. And his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of the will of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of of grace and truth. John testified to this him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes before after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the gospel of our Lord, and we say with the angels and the shepherds, praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And I would like the children to pay attention now for a little bit. Uh, for the children's sermon, you who are children at heart may also pay attention. On, it is Epiphany on Wednesday. And you know what Epiphany is? That's the day when we celebrate that the wise men arrived to worship Jesus. Okay? And we do a couple things on Epiphany. One of them I'm going to do on Wednesday and invite you to pay attention then. It's marking the cross 
on your front door, right above the front door, and you'll leave it all year long with chalk, not pen or marker. Hold off on that. <laughs> chalk. <laughs> and you can leave that on there to remind you of God's blessing all year. But I want to show you one other thing right now. Here we go. Sorry, I had to go get it. I have a little water that reminds us of our baptisms. And then I have, mmm, that smells good, an evergreen sprig from, this is from a tree by Concordia where we have that day camp uh, and play games and stay overnight in tents. But you could go to any evergreen and just take a little branch and then on Wednesday or when you get to it, you and your family walk through your whole house and pray in each room by, going, by shaking the baptismal water in the room and maybe at each other too. <laughs> that remembering that in our baptisms, God has promised to be with us all day, every day, all year long. And that God is going to be in this room, maybe your bedroom, and this room, maybe it's your room with an organ, or no, your dining room, and maybe this room, that can be the kitchen, and you can go all over your house and just sprinkle a little water to, uh, together and say, bless this room, Lord, bless this room. And then, all year long, remember that God is with you, even in the hard times, the sad times, and especially also the joyful times. Uh, and we remember that we are God's children. Let's say a thank you prayer. Let's say thank you, Lord, for our baptism that makes us children of God. One, two, three. Thank you, Lord, for our baptism that makes us children of God. Amen. Remember your sprig, your evergreen sprig. Remember to take a good whiff of it as you use it this week on Wednesday for Epiphany. Set that right here. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I have spent a lot of this last week feeling really full. How about you? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of goodies with Christmas and um, a lot of beautiful tables full of food. Uh, a lot of traditions that you got to eat everything that is available. And a lot of gifts that are wonderful to receive but I don't have the willpower to keep from eating them. And even, like, just a short time after dinner, here I am, snitching a little here, taking a little there, eating more than I probably should and need to, and kind of just feeling full all the while. It's great to be full, don't get me wrong. And it is one of God's blessings to be full of food and not, you know, hungering and, and hurting because you don't have enough to eat. Uh, it is something that we thank God for and we reach out to our neighbor in their need. Uh, at the same time, filling yourself too full, overindulging, is maybe the other ditch to fall into <laughs> and, uh, and maybe isn't quite the fullness that we hear about today. Sometimes it's an emptiness that makes you eat too much even. We struggle with emptiness even in normal years. You think about December, a lot of times people confide in me as a pastor that December is really a hard month actually. Having lost a loved one perhaps, or not feeling the joy that everyone else seems to around you, all of a sudden you feel
feel like you're a downer for people or you just can't get into it. And it's difficult to go through and, and be glad when you don't feel that. We struggle with emptiness for lots of reasons. Isolation, uh, not feeling worthy or good enough. Maybe we haven't been able to see our loved ones like this year. We weren't with the people we maybe wanted to gather with. Or if we did gather, there was a little fear and concern that you might be spreading something that you don't want to share <laughs> in this holiday season. And then there is plenty of hurt and pain that manifests itself. Blaming, words of anger, and distrust. So, yes, as we hear about John's message of fullness, we might remember our empty moments. I think that's why John's writer begins with the fullness of God. God's giving and our receiving in Jesus. They're beautiful words that John starts out with in his gospel about a fullness that is so much more than overindulging. It is about the fullness and wholeness of one's spirit, about being satisfied and enjoying and feeling complete. All of that God pours into Jesus, the Son of God, who is given to the world, who was in the beginning and now has come to join us here. Wow. <laughs> to be with us. To reassure us that what's in God's heart, because this one knows God's own heart, what's in God's heart is great grace and truth and love for you and for me. And all of that comes to live in flesh and blood in the person of Jesus. Light for our darkness. Companionship and fellowship for our loneliness and isolation. And fullness for our longing. This is the gift and the giving that John, the writer of John, offers us today. In him we have all received grace upon grace. Switching gears here a little bit, I would like you to think about a Christmas present, maybe, that you have received this year, and what it means to receive it. You probably have something in mind. Most of us exchange gifts, either on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. What was it? that made your heart glad or touched you that that person would think of that for you. Because the gift, after all, is about our relationships with one another, right? And even if you don't exchange gifts in the traditional way, we do think of all our gifts, don't we? Food, clothing, home, shelter, beauty, light, joy, thankful hearts, relatives that we can at least connect with somehow, so many gifts that gladden our heart. Those gifts remind us of this creator who has always had a dear heart, dream in the creator's heart to be connected with the people that God created. And so this dream is now realized in Jesus Christ, the Son, who, into whom all of God is poured. And this is the gift that we announce, that this is why we hear this story, this reading, on the second Sunday of Christmas. It's for us to know that we are connected by God. We're going to come to this table, and whether you eat here with us, or if you just join us um, and, and don't partake, but uh, still are with us in worship, know that this table is for you, and that this is, you are children of this holy table with the bread, 
and the wine, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, God's word in things and stuff. This that we take into ourselves reassures us that God's grace and truth is coming to us and in us and making us the body of Christ so that when we go forth, we're carrying the word with us. It's like the word becomes flesh in us as we eat together and receive this gift. And as you go forth, you will share glimmers, glimpses of God's glory made known to us. Oh, I have seen so many glimpses of it in, in the gifts that have been just showered. Uh, or in looking between one of you and another, your concern and care. Does this person have enough to eat? They have been feeling ill. Or how is this person doing? I am so concerned. The prayers that you share on Facebook even. Uh, there are so many ways that you see God's love and grace and truth worked out through your daily lives. God's word become flesh in the community. And that's why we come to the table to be reminded that the gift is for us, but the gift is also really and truly with us. Jesus is present here and among us in his church, in the community. Not a fullness that leaves us feeling empty, but a fullness of God that we have, been, we have received in Christ Jesus. Amen. Join me in a beautiful hymn, two verses, uh, verse three and five.
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray now for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Redeeming God, you gather together your people from the farthest parts of the earth. Protect your church in some way. Let it not be overcome by sorrow, division, or despair. Make us radiant with goodness that we might live always to the praise of your glory. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You overflow with grace upon grace. Expand the imagination of those who serve in positions of authority. Open their hearts to the needs of their nations and communities. Protect all those in harm's way and those risking danger for the sake of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You bring consolation to those who weep. Embrace those who feel far off, excluded, or defeated. Accompany those living with chronic and invisible illness. Sustain the weak and weary. Guide us to speak, speak up for justice on behalf of those most vulnerable. Refresh those who labor under the weight of pain or sickness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. At this time, we continue by listening to a verse of Away in a Manger, and during that, naming those that we would pray for especially. Mm -hmm. to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. 
nourish us at your banquet table, that with all who welcome your birth, we might proclaim your peace revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. We pray, Lord, that you would come and reveal yourself to us in flesh and blood, word incarnate, and we pray together, come, Lord Jesus. Say that. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, shower your grace and truth upon us and go with us in the promises of baptism. Refresh us and strengthen us so that we might know our God among us. And we pray, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. All these things... We give in honor and praise to you, holy God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. All is now ready. And we can begin over there if you would like to come forward.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Receive the benediction. Almighty God, who sent the Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels and the, sent the shepherds with good news, bless you this day and always. And all God's people said, Amen. Our sending hymn is uh, The Bells of Christmas, and we celebrate Christmas together yet. Yeah.